Hello and thank you for joining me for game at number four, where CNN has looked strong throughout the back half of the split until they stumbled in yesterday's match versus Dignitas. Thankfully, Crumbs they have still secured their first spot. If Cloud9 win, there are no tiebreakers, and the standings will be as follows. C9, TSM, 100 Thieves, GG, CLG, and EG for your six playoffs team. So, Crumbs, we are very close to finishing off the top six. And normally, I would think, oh, yeah, sure. C9 versus CLG should be C9 favorite, but this is a different CLG. <laughs> different players. That is true. So I think it could be a toss-up at this point, but there are some consistent players that have been playing on C9 and beyond the consistent players. I think what's been really helping them out is the same focus on objectives that they have had all split long, both in the LCS and the Academy team. And you can see it there. I mean, they are leading in every objective we haven't even included Harold in it but they're going to be at the top of that one as well and it just shows you it doesn't really matter who you play what you're playing if you got the objective game down your win rate goes up yeah and we certainly will be looking at the top lane here i think as far as places where CLG can look to attack things do certainly do change as you mentioned with the addition of po belter and a wiggly to the lineup so kind of curious to see what happens there but this is a pretty fun top lane matchup fudge has been incredible uh arguably one of if not the best player in academy certainly has stepped up for c9 this split and deus he has always been the shining light of cloud9 academy and they have had even better results this go around in the summer so while certainly in fudge's favor given his form this split uh deus can always put up a fight especially if he does get his hands on a carry i do think deus can definitely hold his own here the one thing that i worry for him is camille I've been seeing, we've yes. seen Camille too much <laughs> almost in the past few games, and it can definitely take over games. Fudge is the original Academy Camille for this split, so I would not be surprised to see them pick it up for him and just obliterate the top lane. I'd like to see that getting banned out, but first ban of rotation or first rotation of bans to target a Camille feels uh, like a big risk for CLG because you're never entirely sure if that is the direction that C9 is going to go for, because if they are, sure, you're, you're good. But if they're not, you just threw away a ban for no reason. Yeah, and, and as a reminder, like uh, there's maybe some looseness that C9 will be playing with. Like, they have honestly nothing to lose. They've secured first. In fact, the standings, with the exception of Golden Guardians and CLG, is all but decided if Cloud9 win. That's it. We've had those standings that rattled off earlier. But CLG can get themselves a little bit higher in the playoff seeds if they're able to take a victory here. So for C9, you know, they just want to end the season well. Look like the dominating team we know they are. For CLG, though, there is something on the line for them. They will get a shot at a tiebreaker if they can take down Cloud9 Academy. And even though Dig did manage to take them down yesterday, CLG Academy going to have a tough road ahead of them here, given how good C9 have looked for most of this summer. And even though C9 isn't playing for anything, that fact that they have looked so good this summer is, I think, what they're playing for. Because so many of the C9 players are teetering on the edge of, are they, are they LCS ready? They're the strongest Academy team at the moment. Some of the players individually are showing that they definitely can play at an LCS level. So having a, sh a game that doesn't have anything at stake and not taking it too seriously doesn't actually bite well for players that are trying to break into the LCS. You want to make sure that every single game is a S tier game that can be looked upon by LCS teams and say, okay, I want this guy on my team, despite the games not having an actual influence on the standing. So I think C9 is going to come out swinging and trying to put the hurt to CLG. And with a first pick, Kalista, if they can, if you go down this route, yep. you know they're going to be just obliterating the bottom lane. Yeah, Tomo going to look to wreak havoc there versus Wind. And field events for reference are Olaf, Caitlyn, Gangplank, Galio, Twisted Fate, and Ash. So pretty standard. In fact, these are six champions that we see pretty often. I would say four of these six are current meta champions and the other two uh, especially Gangplank is a little more targeted today, but Gangplank also pops up quite frequently Whoa. in drafts as well. As Wind, he's going for a baby. He's going straight to his Draven. That's set as well. That could be a pretty good matchup into the Kalista. She's just bouncing around, and you are standing on your blades and just bringing the hurt down to her. But you need to play to the Draven. So both teams are going to have a strong focus in the bot side of the map, and clearly prioritizing the set over the Volley Bear set, having more flexibility for their lanes that you can play them. And if Tuesday was still in the lineup, I'd be thinking, oh, well, this could be a set in the mid lane. And this seems pretty likely, pretty par for the course for what CLG Academy has been doing this split. 
but with the change of Pobelcher and Wiggly, I'm fairly confident to say this is just going to be a set jungle. Just so easy and reliable. Yep, he played it already uh, yesterday, so not surprised to see Wiggly potentially whip that one out again. But as you mentioned, there's a ton of flexibility with Set, so he does bring a lot to the table. Followed by Zoe locked over on the other side, though, and Vladimir is the last pick for CLG in this phase. So going top lane there for days, we have to think, but also could be a POV champion. He does play this one as well. So CLG keeping things interesting in these first three picks. I think it might be mid here because you don't know what Fudge is playing for just yet, and I feel like Deus would be in a terrible position if he blinds a Vlad at this moment. He wouldn't have to show it because you could flex things all the way down, but it makes sense to me that if C9 shows AD jungle mid, USCLG having red side show the exact same. AD jungle mid. Yeah, Pala did take Zoe here, and I think Vlad is uh, perfectly serviceable as a matchup, but Zoe tends to survive most of her lanes anyway, but I think Pobelt is certainly a champion that he can do damage on, especially as the game gets longer, which is something that CLG, in fact, both Wiggly and Pobelt have been involved in a number of long games in the LCS, but the Academy team has also had some slow ones and some dominating wins as well, to be fair. Uh, Nidalee Morgana Rise Aatrox, so the last four bands of Phase 2. Uh, actually, very interesting to see a Nidalee ban there, so maybe hinting that they think the set is going somewhere else. Could also be Phil's champion as well. Has played his fair share of aggressive support so far. And there's Orianna, so I'm going to go ahead and say that it's not Vladimir Mid anymore. But who knows, Crumbs? Who knows? <laughs> you know, Pastry, it's Vlad Top, and that is weird too. That, that feels really weird because then they banned Aatrox and Rise? The Aatrox ban? Um, okay, right, sure. I'm not sure that's a matchup that Fudge would have taken in the first place. He's going to be very happy with Aurelia here, much stronger than Aatrox into, into the Vlad anyways. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll see where CLG's champions all want to shake out. Uh, again, I think more than anything, like, Day is probably looking to play for comfort here, and I did say that he can do a lot of damage on a carry, so it's nice to see him shifting away to more of a DPS champion instead of uh, the on duty that he has been very reliable on, but also consistently on throughout a lot of his tenure this year. There is nice. Blitz, though, for Phil. Not going to be taking the more passive Alistar, although it's, Alistar's not that passive, actually. <laughs> Love the Bliss. I was going to be a little disappointed if it was an Alistar, actually. Pretty hard to play it into the, the champions that C9 would have yeah. locked in. But Blitz into Thresh, always solid, especially into Zoe. And even against the Nerelli, you actually can do quite a bit to her if you either hit her with a Power Fist during her combo going in, or even just a Silence. A duration where she's just in the middle of the team and doesn't get to dash around makes her a pretty easy target to focus. Yeah, uh, Blitz definitely has a lot of pretty good targets here to try and grab. So I like it here from CLG. I think sticking to their guns, it seems like, and it, of course, is confirmed to be Vladimir Top. Not that we are particularly surprised. Uh, Orion and Top would be cool, but uh, don't expect it. Especially against someone like Aurelia, I feel like. Might just get trapped. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a little, I'm a little surprised. I want to see how well Deus can do from this, because he is one of the last players I would have expected to see from... CLG to blind his champion early. I feel like if he does, it would be an Orn, a tanky kind of champion, not one that is susceptible to falling behind and is a late game scaling threat because it's a very different play style from what we have seen from him, which he can do pretty consistently. I mean, that's why they're banned out the gangplank. That's why the Orn has been such a heavy priority for CLG. But if he can deliver on the Vlad, it's a pretty good look for CLG moving into playoffs. Yeah, it's interesting too, because you know, we've seen his Cassio before. That was one of the things he took up in spring, where he was like, I feel like I have to try and carry these games. But Cassio generally bullies other top laners, but Vladimir tends to get bullied. So I have faith in Deus' ability to play a mage and play the late game, but does he get there safely is the question we'll have to ask ourselves in just a few minutes, because we are going to be stepping away to build up some game delay. When we come back, we'll have the game right from the beginning.
Welcome back, everybody, to game four of the evening and possibly our second last game, possibly not, depending on the results of this game. Crumbs Cloud9 have already locked in first, but CLG can give themselves a tiebreaker to make that playoff positioning just a little bit easier for themselves as they will play Golden Guardians later in the evening if they do manage to pick up the win here. But as we said, Cloud9 Academy, never an easy team to beat. And not easy to be, especially when Fudge is playing a carry here. Not going to be on Shen, Orn, Duty, or any tank, but on the Nerelia, which out of all champions got buffed. I guess all the bruisers have been buffed lately, so we're trying to just make sure. I mean, the Yasuo top got buffed line. recently. Don't right. be too shocked, Carl. <laughs> Yasuo, Jax, Fiora. Uh, I guess Yon came out. Might as well add him to the buff list. Just he for came existing. out, but not. He won't be coming out. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, during playoffs. You know, uh, be well, yeah, other Lilia is though. Maybe we'll see Lilia. Probably not. We saw her today. Do you like Lilia thus far? Um, she's interesting. I like her ulti a lot. Uh, but how to use her effectively is not something I have really grasped. But uh, I guess I because I play Zoe, I just like putting people to sleep, and putting lots of people to sleep seems like an even <laughs> more fun version of that. So uh, I think she's cool, but uh, definitely not sure how to utilize her. Oh. If all her ability, I got it. I got it already. If all her abilities apply her passive that puts people to sleep when you trigger it, GLP. Just GLP everybody and just start <laughs> spraying people with your oh, uh, dream work. dust, and then you ult them. Right? Wouldn't that work? If that worked, I think it has to be her ability. So like her actual skills. I don't know if it works with item actives. If it does work with item actives then both GLP and Twin Shadows become absolutely disgusting. I'd test <laughs> because, it. Because, uh, all right, then, you know what? That's something we can go test later in the practice tool crumbs because uh, that's certainly an idea. Uh, I like it a lot. All right, let's see what happens here in this game. Peeking down the summoner spells and the runes real quick. No surprises, I'm going to say. Pobelta with a nice, respectful cleanse in mid lane. You'll love to see it. And Hail of Blades, once a rare rune crumbs, now one of my favorite runes, but also very common on champions like Callista. When you want to try and get ahead in your 2v2, and when you're playing Draven Blitzcrank, you must at least not lose your 2v2. <laughs> It's the marksman that really prioritizes going for that Hail of Blades. And that 2v2, even though it's all about the marksman here, it's like, oh, yeah, Kalista first pick, Draven. I think it comes down to the supports. The the supports really are going to dictate how this lane plays out because both CLG bot laners were picked after Cloud9 picked their champions. They picked Draven after Kalista, and they picked Th Blitz after Thresh. So they clearly opted into this matchup and need both parts to deliver, whether it's the Draven harassing Kalista or the Blitz hooking out the Thresh. Now, Diamond can definitely outplay it, but he knows that they picked the Blitz to deal with this Thresh. Yeah, definitely excited to see how it works out. This is the champion that Wind does pull out every now and then. I know he loves the champion, like Draven. He's a very big fan of it, but he doesn't get to play it all that often. In fact, I think in Spring, it was actually banned quite frequently, despite CLG Academy's record not being particularly good throughout uh, all of that split. But uh, Wind is certainly a player that when he gets rolling, uh, he does look quite good, and Draven is quite a champion to get rolling on. But this is the matchup we were worried about, Crumbs. Deus is just getting slapped by Fodge. Although, good trade there using that Q. Wasn't even the powered up version, actually. And level 1 Vladimir. It's always scary against the Aurelia that can just be so deadly. She, there's just something about her play pattern that just screams dangerous blades everywhere. Watch out. And yeah, I mean, she jumps on your face and then her ulti puts like millions of blades on the ground. I would agree with that sentiment. Not just the ult, the, the laning phase, I think, is really what scares me. The ulti is, is already where I accept I am dead. It's I during see, the lane where I see her dashing in and now you're like, okay, can I, har can I attack her here? And you try to look at her, the minion waves to understand what you can dash to and what you cannot. But so much of her is just about keeping that passive up. And when that is available to her, she is just a, an absolute monster. But at least the wave is pushing up. And C9 might be thinking about there's it. There's a dive I coming. Do. There's a Zoe. Uh-oh. Oh, there's a three-man dive coming. Zoe's going to TP as well. And now we're going to start things off with a stun. Fallless duet. And that's an easy first blood for Palafox, who TPs in for the delivery. So there is really not much Deus can do. Please don't TP or you'll die again. Please don't TP. Oh, this, no, absolutely not. He's walking. He's thinking about it. He's oh, no. About no it. way. No way. Come on, man. I mean, he has flash still, but, like, I don't know how you get out of this. Stun, jumps, 
Talbot already taking the tower. Inori's there. Into pool he goes. Fudge's still going to live, though. And Inori going to flash in and try and get the kill. He does get it. It is a trade. And here comes Oriana. Poe Belter maybe in time here to at least get another kill. But Fudge has flash. Should be fine. And Deus, it's just not worth it. Oh, so at least we actually learned he had pool, I think, from that earlier play. Because he, he was level 2 when the second dive happened. But CLG is salvaging whatever they can get out of that. I like that Wiggly went to mid lane to push the wave and then Pobelter rotated up, but All right. here we see Here's the first, first one. So I don't actually know if he had pool up and just didn't get a chance. It doesn't matter. He got stunned real quick. And then I think what ended up happening here was Inori used his Q cooldown on the doubles because he didn't have it available right away from this second gank because they should have just stunned the Volley Bear right here, right? So he yeah. doesn't really have it and then now it's available for him, has to burn a flash for it. So it was the disbelief in that Deus would TP back to the lane that actually got him a kill to trade against the Volley Bear. Yeah, I mean, Deus at least gets some gold, but just look at the farm. Like, Deus has nothing. A level 3 Aurelia with a giant creep wave in front of her is hitting the Vladimir. That is confidence from Fudge as he slays that cannon. Here's Wiggly to try and break this potential freeze. Don't think it was really going to with the massive wave there anyway, but Powerfox also roaming back up here, so C9 are fancying a fight here in this 2v2 potentially. Ah, that's why it's a 3v2. Here's the Nori again. No oh, flash no. here. Gets to slow down. Gonna find the stun. Not this time. Good pull. This go around for Deus. Wiggly's still here. It's gonna be bad news for Deus' future experience, but if he can get Fudge here, it's very good news. Good double stun. Fudge's gonna get pulled in. Fudge is actually just fighting the Vladimir. He knows he can get the kill. Looks for the Fudge, gets the auto. Fudge able to take him down. He's level 5 down. I just don't know if Wiggly can do anything. The punches are in. That is gonna be a kill. Oh. No Fudge. He walks to the weak point of the Haymaker and almost manages to live. But here comes an Ori. One level down now. He's gonna have to catch this wave. That was really good from Fudge. The that was sick. To know that Deus did not have pool so that he could actually follow up on his stun and take the kill. And he just puts himself even further ahead. And this Vlad is in some big trouble with a cutlass now and a wave pushing back to him. He has so much kill pressure on this Vladimir. It is a disaster in the top lane for CLG. Kind of makes you forget about what else is going on in the other parts of the map. Everybody's just out there looking out for the top lane. But... Pope Belter doing a really good job farming it thus far. The Oriana could be a big threat here. Yeah, Palafox's roam top lane costing him given how long it took. He actually did it twice as well because they went back, I think, to try and peek in uh, when Wiggly returned to the top lane. So Palafox costing himself 20 farm in the mid lane uh, thanks to those two roams, which obviously not the ideal place you want to be. Uh, in the bottom lane, though, we actually were curious about this lane. Unfortunately for Wind and Phil, nobody has come to their lane except the lane as we expect. And Puma's actually up 10 farm right now. Approaching on two waves here as Wiggly's going to try and take the Scuttlecrow. He's going to get it with the Smite. A set is going to tick over to level 6. Yeah, Tomo just pretty happy to know that he can continue to push this wave because the only thing that the Blitz Raven lane has is the hooks. Yeah, not really doing anything if the hooks don't land. And if the hooks are missing or you have a wave to play around, it's only Draven and then this could happen. But there's a gank coming from Wiggly. Good hook there for Diver. Here's Wiggly, as you mentioned. There's the power fist out. No, that's the hook. Excuse me. That's the E there from Phil, but Diamond is already going to flash away. He uses the exhaust as well, so two sums expended. But Diamond does keep himself alive. They had to exhaust that because Wiggly was level 6. You could have face breaker it into ultimate and take out Diamond. But this might be the last time they actually have an opportunity to play around the bottom lane because the Kalista and Thresh are going to be hitting level 6 fairly soon. And we know just how oppressive that lane gets to be at that stage. He's oh, diving? He's diving. Yeah, he's diving straight up. He's dead. Fudge just knows it. Knows the limits. Doesn't even need to test them. Fudge is playing so well right now. See, this is why I was worried it was going to be a Vlad top phase 3. <laughs> yeah. No, no one else in the world is playing Vlad top right now. Dragon goes over to COG at least, but yeah, Deus's blind Vlad getting heavily punished by Fudge in the early game here. I mean, also by Anori and Palfox, right? Like, it's a team effort to give Fudge this score, but the individual skill he has displayed in the moments he has had so far in just eight minutes of gameplay has been pretty astounding. Something about the Mammoth Boys from OCE Crumbs. What is it? Tri what, triple what's King going on? and Fud. I mean, to be fair, they're all like 
OPL champions. King, I think, actually has the most OPL titles of any player ever in the history of that league. But I mean, Fudge and Triple went on the, one of the best OCA teams before they came here. They obviously ended up on separate teams here. They went to Worlds as a squad. You know, OCA I'd like whole region, but the top talent clearly can compete here. I mean, it's, it's time to reassemble the OCE teams, put them together, because I'm, I'm already digging this idea. Fudge and Triple together. If these two players do well on their own. Why wouldn't they do better together? Yeah, also, Destiny on that team uh, was at least playing for Origin. Uh, for some point in, LE, in uh, LEC, so four of the five people ended up in, in international teams. Oh, the wave is pushing back as yeah, well. Yeah, this just feels so bad. After. Okay, we can help here. Uh, We'll see if they can kill Fudge here. Yeah, it's just going to make sure this freeze gets broken. Wiggly doing the right thing here, covering for his top lane. Fudge is going to hold this, though, but can't hold it forever. Ooh, tr trying his hardest, but not going to get it. Here comes the jungler, though. Quoll Stewart misses. Fudge is out of there. Here comes the set. And always here, they're going to flash it. Needs to get the QB. Can't because set's in the air. And now Fudge is going to go back. He dodges the Haymaker. Deus again going to be the target. The Storm's oh. up, brought, and Fudge gets the kill again. Now Wiggly. Oh, he's just so dead. He's got no flash. He's going to get stunned. And Nori is just going to walk it off. And Fudge is going to grab the double. I don't think we're here to have a tiebreaker today, Pastry. Yeah, just I don't hunch. think so, Crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for anyone that you didn't want to vote this game. I don't think we're getting it after 10 minutes of play already. Fudge and Nori have just taken over the top half of the rift. It's been the story of today's games. It's teams playing around the top lane, playing with whoever can play these carry style champions. Ooh. Camille, Renekton, or even an Irelia. It looks like going into playoffs, if you don't have somebody that can play these bruisers expertly in laning phase, you're going to be in some trouble. Well, here's a little redemption wave clear here. It's one of the Zoe specials. Cobalt, although he's going to farm this out. Still holding his uh, farm lead pretty well. Blue Palafox has cut it down somewhat. Blue Buff's going to get donated over also as the Diamond is on the roam. What? And again, that? unfortunately, uh, we wanted to talk about the bot lane at some point. Tomo's actually 20 CS ahead, so whatever is happening in the bottom half of the map isn't really good in the isolated 2v2, but uh, unfortunately, this game has been all about top lane on either side of the map. That's the ironic perk of the coal. You get to fall behind in CS and still make up for it later. It's like, aha, I actually have some gold extra. But now there is a Ooh, bubble, bubble angle. Wiggly. Oh, beautifully turned hook by Diamond as well. Wiggly, no flash. No, he does have it. It just doesn't matter. Tomo is going to rip the spears out and claim the kill. Oh, and even in the top lane, there is more punishment. There is Nori's Carol. the same level as the Vladimir. And what level is Wiggly? Is he level 8 or 7? I'm see. not sure. He's currently dead, so I can't see. <laughs> oh, sorry, you can't. Oh, there seven. you go. Seven. Oh. We should have, I should have made you guess, Crumbs. That's my mistake. I missed uh. my game for a moment. Palfox running the heal. Pope Elsa looking for the solo dolo kill. Runs in. Flash QW. No, not up. Close, though. Good play there from POB. Trying to hold things down in the mid lane. It's an experience he's relatively familiar with, but... Uh, the top tower, out of tower is going down. But already has finished Blade of the Ruin King. They didn't even need the Herald to take down that turret. This is turret. a questionable teleport from Power Fox. Gonna put him to sleep, but here comes Fudge. So the cavalry is arriving, and strong it is. Wiggly gonna get poked down, and uh, I guess I'll take it back. Power Fox uh, had coverage from his teammates. Actually gets up pretty easily there. And now they get to actually play around this mid wave to go for the Herald. And also, your game show movement is not entirely out of the question because we've got a third dragon coming up. That's true. Already had that first mountain go to CLG. We've got the Infernal there, I guess. We'll wait until they start it to make our guess. Zimbek Cloud and Ocean are our options. In fact, I already have my guess, Crumbs. Do you have yours? Oh, we have to get... Okay. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter when wind, we get wind. right? Yeah, it's true. Win, win. Yeah, I think it's Cloud Drake too, because it seems like a C9 win to me, Crumbs. Oh, in the mid lane, Fudge going to miss the ulti as Anori tried to get get it going with the volleyball ult, turning off the tower in mid, but the Herald is down. They will take the tower as well, and they'll fall back to split the Drakes here and make sure that the fast soul snowball is not an option for CLG. And Crumbs, we'll see if we're right. We both guess Cloud. The dragon is down. 
What's it gonna be? Surely the odds must be increased if we both believed in it. I agree. Yeah! Oh, let's go! Nice. I mean, That's it just makes trick. sense. It's a mascot trick for Cloud9. One day we'll track their win rate when they have Cloud Drake. <laughs> Is that the, that's the answer. Name yourself after things in game. Team Baron. Oh, team wow, that, Baron. That's a great oh, well, team name, well, actually. <laughs> Unfortunately, the problem there is that, like, you know, it can go bad quickly, right? If you become the team, no one oh, yeah. giving it away. <laughs> or the Baron throws. Team Baron yeah, team once again. Team donates Baron. <laughs> team throws at Baron. All right, well, an Infernal Drake now for Cloud9. Again, they've stopped the potential snowball for CLG. They're basically just turning off all of the win conditions that CLG are trying to accrue. I think Poe Belter is, like, the one we can look to right now and say he is strong. If he can find a good ultimate, right, this next mid game team fight when he has two items, he can look good here, because bottom line's not looking good either, unfortunately. Both sides of the map falling to pieces on the CLG side as Tomo and Diamond pick up a 2v2 kill. I don't know if Pope Belter has it in him to, to pull this one out. It feels like he's uh, bailing water under... You, you ever been in a boat that's kind of underwater and you're bailing water out of it at the same time? Yeah, I've like been in a canoe that's had some, uh, some yeah. issues floating, yeah. that That's kind of what it feels like where he's at here, where you're, you're just taking water out of the ocean pretty much, hoping yeah. that your ship writes itself here because no side lane is winning on their own no side lane is winning with help and the farm lead that he has is nice and the oriana is definitely a pretty strong carry he has the tools to do it but they have a lot of dive power on the side of c9 that could just say okay just pick on po belcher because vlad and draven have not done much this game they're not that strong there's only one priority target yeah, it feels like your team asks you for some magic, and you're soberly reminded that you're a magician and not an actual wizard as time. And he's going <laughs> to get caught by the trap that was set by CLG in the brush. 1v4, not really possible for the fish to win out there. So hold on to his flash, hold on to his stopwatch. But CLG do get a pick there. They'll need a few more of those to close the 4,000 gold cap that has already opened up this game. So Belcher has got sleight of hand, not miracles. Exactly. And uh, we'll see what he can do here in the mid lane. But uh, top lane is uh, forfeit at this point. Fudge's CS lead is 55 at quick glance. Tomo isolated here in a 1v3. He's hopping away. Phil, ooh, great flash by Tomo. Go back in. He can definitely get a down here. See you later, Phil. The rend is going to come back up. He actually doesn't even need it. Oh, the hook But another one. They actually make it. His teammate killed. There's the set ulti out from Wiggly. They do get the shutdown onto Tomo, but it looked disastrous for a second there. CLG still roaming together to try and find picks, but Diamond and Anori are going to defend the tower. So CLG, they're getting a little bit of gold here and there, but they can't convert into any more gold sources here as the turrets are staying up for Cloud9. It's good that they're looking for something, that they're actually yes. still trying to make a play happen because they know that it's not going to work in mid, it's not working top. Where could you go? It's in the bottom lane. And Tomo did a really nice job in outplaying Phil there. I love to see how he kited that out and then flashed the hook to make sure that he could continue to chase that down. And there was not there was a world where if the set did not get that close, he actually would have been able to outplay the whole thing and stay alive for the aftermath. So this uh, Tomo substitution for Phil, sorry, for King, starting to look like one of the most seamless transitions of all time because you were just talking about how King was a OPL champion and just seeing Tomo right there I'm like man this guy's pretty good at Kalista he's pretty good at a lot of carries where did he come from yeah if we think about I mean C9 Academy's like arc from the beginning of this split I mean they didn't look good I think they were 0-4 at one point he got the season and now they're clearly the number one team in Academy again you know, Tomo was the new guy, you know, he was playing mages, he was adjusting to, to life on this team, which for Academy had quite a lot of pressure, and I mean, Cloud9 are a very big organization, and they are very successful in League of Legends across both the LCS and Academy, especially in recent memory. You know, Tomo was a guy that was at Scouting Grounds, he was going to go play in Collegiate, right, that was his plan, when he didn't get a team offer, and then all of a sudden, a position opens on Cloud9 Academy, because King, due to the current global situation and some visa troubles, uh, could not find a way to play so he joins the team on you know pretty short notice I'd imagine and he's gone from a player that looked very out of place to uh, potentially another star in the cloud nine talent machine right they just it's something about cloud nine and finding players this whatever it is 
it seems like their players always end up being really good. You know, I love that story because it is the epitome of when opportunity knocks, you have to be ready because yes. the opportunity was never there. The opportunity was somebody couldn't make it. Can you step up to the plate when that person does not get to take his regular spot? And Tomo just said, well, I can do it. I'll do it. And now it feels like a pretty seamless transition for him. A win here, I think, would definitely solidify him as a really impressive marksman in the bot lane for Academy. And this is just that nice little play. Let's see if there was a way to actually help play it because Wiggly moves up. Uh, it was that hop. That hop forward actually was yep. what did it onto him. Had he kept walking back, but how could he have known that Paul Belcher was there? Yeah, but at this point, Pebelter is uh, going to have to chalk up quite a lot of overtime in this game. Uh, he's, you know, still 40 CS ahead of Power Fox. He's roaming around. He's been consistently uh, a part of the plays that CLG have, have made in this game. Uh, that doesn't fix the situation of being down nine kills to four and not having any towers, but uh, CLG and POB in particular are fighting back here in this game. But we've already got that second Drake over. A Cloud9, they'll be on their way to Soul Point in four minutes time, and Fudge is just like... Just really just ruining He did not give a fudge about No, he Vladimir does not! <laughs> He's, uh, I mean, we might, he might get Flame Horizon in this game, we haven't seen in a minute, as mid lane, Phil's gonna be forced to flash away, because Cloud9 are assaulting both the tower and the champion in mid. They'll take the tower, Fudge will likely do the same there in top lane. Deus TP'd. Oh, he's here in mid lane because he's trying to help out his, the squad. Oh. It's going to prove to be a decision he regrets as Power Fox is zooming in with the spell three for the Nimbus Cloak Speed. But Deus does escape, does have to burn his ulti and his flash to do so, though. That just makes him weaker in the 1v1 when he eventually faces Fudge once again. Power Fox's angles on some of these bubbles have been pretty incredible to watch. I mean, Seal is just running out of things to defend. I mean, Fudge has Trinity Force finished now. At 20 minutes, he has two items. One of them is one of the single most expensive items in the game. And uh, he's going to go to the next side lane here and start to work on the tier 2 in bottom lane. And I think in a 1v1 where Fudge knows that there's nobody in the vicinity, Deus cannot survive 1v1 under the tower. I think we have reached that point now where he actually just cannot live. The Aurelia is too powerful. I see people near the jungle, I get very concerned for Deus' safety. It certainly yeah, looks like that. Even at a tier 3, the Blade Trinity combination should have enough sustain and damage that it only take a few autos to force the pool from Deus, and then you're tanking maybe 2-3 to three turret shots, depending on if you have a minion wave. So without a stopwatch or anything else to buy even more time, he is definitely in some trouble down there. All right, the good news is, Fudge's mid lane, so <laughs> Deus can safely farm that wave as Palavox is taking the top lane and trying to push that one in. Baron's also up at spawn a minute and a half ago, and Cloud9 look like they want to set up for a very quick two-man here. They do have the Callista, one of the better champions in the game, at sustaining damage on Baron. Are they going to clear out the vision first here? Still got a couple wards to move out of CLG's red side jungle if that's the play they do want to make. But with Fudge having TP and they know Deus doesn't have it, they've got a very real advantage here if they do want to make a play on this side of the map. A yeah, big part of that playmaking will be when Fudge gets to push this wave up because when his minion wave crashes and they see where Vlad is at and they know that they really can pressure, that's when it's a lot easier for them to pivot into the Baron. But that ward in the back of it has done a lot to try to catch Pro Belter, gets the Banshee, then they might just get him too. He's got yeah, it's Chilling Smite, good cleanse there, Stormbringer though, Wiggly maybe the target instead, but he's going to get pulled back towards POB. Wind is here, going to pull him back with a Shockwave there, and Wind is going to get the kill by the look of things. It is POB, of course, that secures the final hit, but CLG respond well to take down the Cloud9 jungler. That is a really big pick for CLG. All the gold to Pope Belter is really the only way they can win this. He's already doing a great job farming. And he picked Orianna just because this is a 1v5 champion that can actually win games by herself if she's left untouched. Doing the right thing here, knowing that I can't actually help my laners, I just need to get myself strong and then team fight well. This little bit of gold will go a long ways as the itemization that he's gone for is opting for a little bit of a defensive start first, just so he can stay alive and survive those picks that Field 9 was just looking for. Yeah, it looks like Cloud9 also have to relinquish all their lane pressure because Dragon is coming back up in 30 seconds. Uh, thankfully, Fudge has actually done a good job of 
pressuring this bottom lane so much that there wasn't a lot in here anyway because CLG didn't want to walk towards the Aurelia while the rest of the top side was being pressured. Uh, there are a couple wards down now. I can see one that the Power Fox has turned off. He's going to go ahead and take that one down now. And I imagine Anori is going to pop that sweeper and make sure the rest of the vision is gone. Indeed, he will. But Clan and are set up here to take this third dragon that would put them on soul point. They're still up 5k at this juncture. I wonder if CLG fancy trying to contest this dragon or going for a trade instead. By the looks of things, they're not going to get a choice in either matter because C9 are going to perfectly split the objectives. Yeah, and C9 is now waiting for the final dragon to actually guarantee themselves a fight. I highly doubt CLG won't contest that one. And they also have the items to actually prepare for that team fight right now. You have the biggest one that tells me it's a team fight about to happen. The double stopwatches for Diamond and Fudge, especially for Fudge. Having such a squishy build, at this stage in the game, if he goes in, he can get popped right away. So if he can just use a Zhonyas to dodge out of a Shockwave, or even just buy enough time for, say, a Lantern to come out and bail him out of a sticky situation, can really keep that bounty alive. Because those two bounties that C9 have on their heads, while the Goldie can be large, if those slip into the pocket of Pobelter, they're in some trouble. CLG is definitely still capable of winning these team fights. They've got Vlad Oriana. Two big ultimates can just turn the tides. Yeah, I mean, with the turret difference and the bounties combined, there's people, what, 3 or 4k sitting on the table if CLG can get all that stuff cleanly. So there's definitely a ability to close the gold gap. It's just, you know, how how cleanly can they do that, if at all, is going to be the question here. Is Cloud9 have just straight up started Baron here? Deus is not going to be allowed to leave the top lane. Hook here for Diamond. Here's the TP, though. I take it all back. Because Fudge has actually walked up here to try and make the fight happen. C9 not looking good right now, but here's Fudge with a potentially very big flank. He does ping Phil with a flawless duet. But no follow-up there for C9. Love the look there from C9. They can turn back to this if they want. Oh, hook! It's Fudge, he's actually dead here in the stopwatch. He goes, the lantern's out, it might save him. The heal out as well, but the axe was in the air for wind as he grabs a very big chunk of cash for himself. Wow, oh my god, that is such a big pick to get. Phil with a max range hook gets gold over to the Draven who actually got to cash out. We forgot to mention how in that play in the bot lane where they killed the Kalista, that was a cash out for Draven. So he's actually been quietly Pretty strong despite having fallen behind to Tomo in the CS department. And this just slows down C9 a lot. This is uh, it's getting kind of scary, Pastry. I, I don't think that that was a good kill to give over. Look at the gold. It's the, pretty much the same between Draven, Oriana, and Aurelia. Yeah, it's the big discrepancy just is this one in the top lane, right? I mean, that is like 4k between in fact that basically the gold lead that cloud and are currently presenting is pretty much all isolated to the top lane matchup which is impressive but it does mean that fudge has a much bigger burden on him to do something with the lead he has right because he's the one with all the gold he burned that stopwatch too so that pressure is now mounting even more because he doesn't have that ability to get into the fight and actually do something now. He knows he'll get popped right away because, yeah, if he was focus fire in the hook, but he didn't last at all. In the knockup, they can just pop him. Yeah, and Aurelia can be kind of brittle, right? Not that tanky, especially with this kind of build right now. You need to auto to get the life steal down. You know, a shield only blocks magic damage when you channel your W, or reduces it, I should say. So, you know, not all that durable. Usually that mobility is the thing that keeps you alive as you life steal away, dancing on things. But uh, they are going to do this once again. They know Deus' TP is already gone. This was the benefit of Fudge walking to that team fight, is that they can make this Baron play once again. I have to really credit CLG's ability to ward in areas that are typically not scouted by Control Wars, because this is the second time that C9 does a play around Baron, and CLG has no idea what's going, or C CLG knows that is happening, and C9 does not. They're not going to go back to it again because they're not entirely sure they have the ability to take a, a fight in the same way that it happened last time. And they get scouted right as they hit it. What a great Scryers for win. Yeah, they are going to bait it in though. But just walking over, so I guess the plan is to turn and team fight here because Sealdia are in the area well before they can finish the objective. Pilg again, maybe going to look for a hook here. And are you ready with the ulti if he wants to jump in? Kalista stacking those 
arrows. Well, they might actually just try and get it here. Wiggly's asleep. That's a good target to get. They'll hook him up. They'll try and take him down, but he's got a big Haymaker shield ready to go. Does pop it. The rend is pulled out, but that's not enough to get the kill on Wiggly. And Fudge is going to base because he's got a stack of cash to spend, I imagine. So this TP back in may be the thing that triggers a fight for Cloud9. Well, with Wiggly having to base, they can just go back to it. He's going to stay has Hex Flash if anything really needs him to get into the mix. But yeah, kind of arrows. Stay. Ooh, Phil with the flash. Q is going to find it. Will Wind's going to get killed. Nori now. That means the Baron is on the table for the taking. But Wiggly, he's also dead. So no junglers as the Baron is still up. Tomo low, but not out of it. And Deus getting low here is Fudge. Did line up the stun, but he didn't have the kill through the stop. But his Diamond dives back in because he knows he has to try and kill Deus. But he's not going to get it. And Wind's going to flash in and get the kill onto Fudge. So CLG keeping themselves in this game, keeping their tiebreaker available here. Wow, the combo between Phil and Wiggly there was sick. They get the Volley Bear and ult him into the back of the team. Now you also get to zone anybody from following up into your front line. You get the massive damage from the Volley Bear's HP into the back line, and everybody else gets to follow up here. I think CLG just might have turned this game around. This is not only going to be the Baron, but a lot of time for these carries to get some gold as now they're having a big bounty. At least top nine get a soul here, but Cloud Soul does not feel like it's gonna make oh, the power fox. In the world. He's dead, but both are gonna get the shot done. Here's the smite they need though, and Ori is gonna get the soul for the team. Can't get out though, yeah. This time with the lantern is gonna make sure his buddy gets out safely. So Cloud Soul is nice. Pretty good on the front line, especially here on Cloud9, but uh, oh. certainly not game over. CLG with the Baron now. It's going to be their turn to try and even up this gold lead. In fact, it's only a thousand gold between these two teams Jesus. now. Pastry, look at the level lead that Pope Belcher has. Oh, he's level 18. That's intense. Diamond is level 10. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, PRB's been put in work. We can say that much. First to 18 in this game by a mile. This is actually the one player that I've seen this year give us the someday treatment when he comes in. So let's see how this happens. It's Kalista flashes right away, thinking that he's going to get hooked, hit by the hook, but everybody else came in to follow up on that play. And in the in the backside, it looked like the Blitzcrank did a good job peeling with Raven and Oriana. So two fronts on different fights with COG because they were not tanking Baron or the aggressors. They did a really good job in identifying how they could actually play that. Yeah, I like what uh, Diamond tried there. I think trying to get the kill and save your teammates is the right play. Looking back, I don't know why Fudge didn't flash towards his teammate and try and at least escape the same way, but whatever it was, CLG picking up their brand, picking up a bunch of kills. They'll call this game even now as far as gold goes. Well, I, I think it's in the favor of CLG big time now. This Orianna is so strong. Good sleep there for Power Fox, but can't pick up Phil with the extra poke from the Paddle Star. And as you said, uh, kind of someday in the game right now for Poe Belta. Massive farm lead, huge item lead, huge level lead. Right, he, he's actually basically speed running a game in the way you'd think a top LCS player should if they come into Academy and, and actually have the skills to do. So he's identified how it was that he needed to do it. Pick a champion that can 1v5, that can help his team out later in, in later stages of the game, and can farm very well. So prioritizing the farm, and now the focus that he put on catching all those waves in the earlier stages of the game has come to fruition as a ginormous threat that C9 doesn't really have an answer to because of the giant level discrepancy. Yeah, I mean, POB has always been a big boon to teams he's been on. I think he's often been overlooked because like I think people remember his mistakes more than his highlights and he's a pretty like quiet consistent player right he doesn't go for a lot of flashy plays all that often but this is certainly you know a reminder that POB is a very real threat uh, you know a player that often has been around for so long he often helps with uh, like in-game calling and macro calls uh, he speaks full in English and Korean right and uh, with the history of Korean imports in the LCS and now in Academy as well uh, you know, he can offer that as well. Like, I'm sure Wins English is quite good. He's been speaking English with his team the whole time he's been here, but, you know, he's got a little bit of help if POB needs to, needs to add that as well. He plays really good music, too. I'm yeah, I mean, yeah, he's not at all. <laughs> right? Hey, why would you want Pope Belcher on your team? What's going on, teams? 
Um, he's certainly making a case to just straight carry this game in 1v9 slash 1v5 fashion. He's about to flame Horizon Palafox. And Palafox is the guy that we were highlighting as one of the best mid laners that we have in the Academy. All right, and with all that considered then, Crumbs, this is actually now a battle of who can be the bigger carry. Is it going to be Fudge, who has Flame Horizon Deus, versus Poe Belter, who is on the verge of Flame Horizoning Power Fox and is keeping CLG in this game. He's evened up the gold. He's actually got CLG the gold lead. Sure, Cloud9 have the Cloud Soul, but uh, this game is going to be about more than that soul. I think it's Poe Belter. If it's Poe Belter versus Fudge, the AoE and the safety that the Orianna has to execute on what she needs to do is so much more reliable than what Fudge has to do. Like Fudge's outplaying in a team fight has to be absolutely bonkers. I mean, he has to just style on so many members with an incredible set of stuns. And even his counterpart is actually already super relevant. Three needle or three giant items on this Vladimir, a huge threat actually. Yep, bubble here from Powerfox attempted, but CLG just walking through the front door at this point. They'll bash it down, they'll take down the in-hit tower. And there's another hook from Phil, it doesn't really matter who you pick at this point, all targets seem pretty good. And they're gonna dive back in, Wiggly getting involved, but Redemption coming down, C9 are gonna reset this fight, but CLG have more damage to come. Haven't taken the in-hit just yet, but Cloud9 have taken a beating trying to keep it alive. Okay, they get an inhibitor and get to fall back. This timing for a reset is really important for both these teams, especially CLG could get caught up to trying to clear some jungle camps and foregoing the 30-second Baron spawn that is imminent right now. So, the objective game is going to be the name of the game thus far. I think C9 has a real opportunity, though, to catch CLG off guard because they have the setup first which gives them the opportunity to find a pick and not even opt into a 5v5. If they can actually set up the midway by pushing it and then going into the jungle with the champions that can pick, like a Thresh or even the Zoe, there's an opportunity for C9 to still claim this win. Yeah, I mean, both teams uh, have the game in their hands, I would say, at this point. I think Fudge's split push power cannot be overstated. Good sleep there onto Phil, but no follow-up there. Those Mercury Treads coming in handy there for the Blitzcrank, and CLG is going to start the Baron. Fudge is walking over. C9 are opting to teamfight this. Asleep again. Oh, that hook was sick, Nasty from Phil. Thank goodness Palafox had a spell shield, but the damage is sustaining from Baron. Maybe a little too much. Phil is a magnet for these bubbles, by the way. As Fudge gets the ulti down, he does clip wind on the very end oh. of it. But the Baron is up and available. Wiggly is going to go down. Now the Baron's there for the taking, and Ori knows he's just going to rush into the pit. Shockwave is going to whip for Pogelta. They needed that one, but he's going to find himself the double kill, and he's going to leap onto Pogelta as well. He's going to get the kill. Are you kidding me, but He's going to make it a quadra kill before he goes down, but it's GA only as he gives up his second life, but not his first. And Cloud9 are going to TP Fudge down bottom lane to try and end this game, Crumbs. They can end it, definitely can. What? They oh, what a actually bubble. actually played this, and he's... Oh, there was a dead. Yep, he's dead. There's the ace of Power Fox. They'll deny the Penta from Fudge, but it just doesn't matter. Cloud9 will not be stopped today, Crumbs. They say no tiebreaker for you, CLG. We're the best team in the Academy, and we're here to show why. Get Poe Belter out of here. He's not going to smurf on us today. It's Cloud9 all the way to the end as they'll finish playoffs in style and still in first. Wow. Oh, I'm getting chills from that play. The way they played around that Baron was so nice. Just back and forth by their time, get some hooks, get some stuns, let CLG tank it, let them get a little bit nervous, and then they struck, right? They made sure that they got the Blitzcrank removed, no more could they hook the Aurelia. They go onto the Baron, distract CLG, and then Fudge in the back line, takes out Pobelter and Draven? Quadra kill on the Aurelia? I think, uh, turns out he was the greater carry. Yeah, right, we asked the question, who's better for Belter or Fudge in this game? And we did think it was PB for a while, Crumbs. I was there with you that it did feel like Poe Belter was ready to carry that game, and he was certainly in position to playing well uh, the entire game. But Fudge with that final team fight, it was one of those things where I'm like, ah, is he really going to stop split pushing here? I feel like you just split and hope they pull off the Baron, but Fudge proved us wrong. If you think about it, fight. both teams lost around Baron. CLG, yes. <laughs> C9's major fight was actually when they tried to do Baron a bunch of times and then CLG collapsed and killed them. When did CLG lose? When they started doing all the Baron dance and then lost. And I think looking back for it, it was that 
ba the time that it took them from taking the inhibitor to resetting was way too long. That's one of those situations where teams do a really good job in doing one of those classic fanatic brush baits where they'll just go into a brush that's really close to the base and then recall together there. And if somebody comes, then you can just kill them. But because you're channeling the recall, you're all together, there's a chance that you can actually get a pick. But if you don't, you get a quicker reset, which gets you back to the Dragon and Baron first, which puts you away from the position that they were in, where C9 just had complete control, but you were still thinking that you could do the objective. And, you know, Crumbs, we were talking about this a little bit, I think, before we got into this game, and this idea of, like, you know, where are players in Academy up to as far as playing in the LCS? And for me, I kind of look at it in levels. I have uh, not ready for the LCS, LCS capable. Like, I, they are able to play, but they're not, like, fully ready to necessarily play at their best level or necessarily ready for what the LCS has to offer. But if you need them to slot in, you know, they'll survive, right? They're not going to drown. And then you have ready for the LCS. And I think Fudge is well and truly ready for the LCS. Whether or not he gets a spot, oh, totally different question. But as far as skill goes, yes, it's cheating a little because he's already proved himself in another region. Like we've had players, close that comes to mind is like, you came from a different region. You're clearly good enough for this league. But if you were ever trying to prove yourself, Crumbs, that is the kind of game you turn in. Absolutely. And you could actually get a few more of the games he's had this split and even this year as more games to turn in for him. So we'd really like to see what he can do competing against these other top laners in NA because he's one of the few that actually plays a ton more carries, especially the Bruisers, the Camilles, the Irelias. How many players can we think of in NA that legitimately have those two and ready to go to hard carry games? It's not a, I'm not sure if I can play this. It's, I can definitely play this. You can play around me and I can win the game. Yeah, not many. So yeah, well, and Fudge certainly turning it another great game. It's Cloud9 in this season in style. We are taking a break, but on the other side, we'll be hearing from Anori from Cloud9 Academy. So don't go too far away.
Welcome back. I'm here with C9 Academy's Anori after finishing on top. First, once again in the regular season. How's it feeling, man? It was pretty good. I mean, this time it was a lot cleaner, I would say. Maybe towards the end it was kind of rough, but I mean, getting first two times in a row is pretty good. Uh, yeah, talk to me a little bit about kind of the mid and end of that game. It seemed like it was just going to be a completely crushing victory with how well you all played the early game, and then things kind of got a little fuzzy in the middle. What happened around uh, kind of that barren where things went wrong? Yeah, I think we kind of got like such a huge lead. Everyone was kind of having fun a bit. But after a while, we were like, hmm, maybe we kind of need to get it together and not throw this game because it was still pretty important for us to win. All right, well, you talked about your early game, so I do want to try something with you here. We have a new little segment where I want to get, you know, kind of deeper into the inside of the pros that are playing the game. So I'm going to show a replay from this game, and I want you to tell me kind of what you were thinking uh, as this was all happening. So you're probably familiar with what's about to happen here. Yeah, so we're like, Vlad is free kill, come up top. Fudge is like, I'm going to dominate this guy. I was like, okay, I'm going to stun him shield. We tank it once. Everyone's <laughs> like, let's kill Deuce again. We're like, yeah, for Sven, because he's rank one, and Deuce is rank two. So we try to kill Vlad again. I was a little late on this one. I should have went there earlier because my Q was down. But we're still able to get the kill. We really wanted to punish Deuce because Ben is rank one and he wants to keep that rank one spot in solo queue. And yeah, it just kind of worked out. I like that. You know, protecting your LCS teammates, making sure they can maintain their ranks. Are we surprised he TP'd back at all? Because when Crumbs and I looked at that play, we were like, he just seems so dead here. Yeah, actually, I mean, I was surprised because I went to do Krugs. I was like, nah, this guy's not TPing here. No way. But then yeah. he's an NA player, so of course he TPed back. <laughs> and yeah, uh... he got punished for him. All right, well, kind of looking back at the whole season, of course, moving into playoffs, you are first once again in the regular season. Fun fact, despite the LCS having many back-to-back -back champions, there has never been a back-to-back -back academy champion. So is Cloud9 Academy going to be the first team to win both in a year? Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm feeling pretty good. The team is feeling pretty good. We got a lot of time to like build a lot of chemistry together. We have an incredible top laner, Fudge, OC top player. And I mean, Academy overall seems pretty easy. Like I'm pretty confident in our team because we get to scrim LCS teams sometimes and we've had really good showcases on that. So I think Academy is going to be pretty easy for us to win. All right, well, confidence is always from Inori. Thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah, no problem. All right, well, that was an oi for the Verizon post game interview, but don't go too far away. We have one last game cooking for recording in the evening. Don't go anywhere.